Welcome to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast series. Here we talk about all things franchising. What is it all about? Is it for you? How do you find the best one to own? And so much more. Now your host, Tim Parmeter. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast. I am founder and CEO of Fran Coach, Tim Parmeter, and also your host of the Franchising 101 podcast. Um, we have come to the end of the year, December 29th, 2022. Uh, can't believe we're here already, right? I know it's a little cliche, but uh, definitely the case. So we want to take a moment at the end of the year to just kind of take a little look back before we jump into next year and thank everybody right off the bat for, for, for our continued listeners and our followers uh, people that have uh, connected with us to look at franchises and even just some of those that, um, you know, have messaged us with some ideas to talk about. Um, just kind of looking back at all the different episodes we had this year and all the, the incredibly wide range of topics. So when it kind of like kick back a little bit and, and look at some of kind of the highlights, if you will, and, I want to start off with the the segment we we call it in in their words because it's cleverly titled that way because it, we're going to hear in their words of our clients who have become franchise owners and some of the things from their background a little bit of their journey um, and how they got to this end point of number one even looking at franchising number two what was it that really kind of drove them? What were their key things along the way? And then what they end up, what did they end up doing? Um, so we've got a couple, uh, and again, these are no offense to everybody else that comes on our show. These are my favorite ones because it, it's really just seeing that metamorphosis throughout uh, the process and the opportunity and the real privilege we have with, with working with our folks. So take a moment to hear a little bit about what we learned and, and some of the journeys we helped uh, we helped navigate this year at Fran Coach. For probably about 10 years of my career now, we'll, we'll call it 10 years. So since uh, my youngest was, was barely walking, uh, I've been traveling 40 to 50% of the time. And, you know, this pandemic hit, and my kids got to see what it was like for dad to be home all the time, you know, to, to tuck them in at night, to help them with their homework, um, not to be talking on FaceTime or on the phone with me, you know, while they're trying to get things done and continue life at home. And uh, their voices just continued to get louder and louder about that as things got back to normal and I started traveling more and more again. And so I started to get more serious about figuring out what is it that I'm going to do about this? Am I going to do nothing about it? That's always a choice. Or am I going to find some way to be able to make money and not have to travel? And so, you know, obviously I, I looked internally where I was working and being in the restaurant business, uh, you know, the, the hours of operation aren't always very family friendly. Uh, you know, restaurants are open until 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, and then there's closing work to do afterwards. And then you're up again the next morning. They're open seven days a week. And one of the things that I had thought pretty hard about was, is the restaurant industry where I want to be if I want to own a business? Um, and prior to that, did I want to own a business? You know, I looked at, at other places of employment and really found that the, the niche that I kind of developed as my profession, it, I was going to be traveling. So that was when it became apparent that I needed to be an owner of a business. And before meeting you, it was much more difficult. You know, I was going on websites, uh, and, and, you know, different business broker websites and looking at, you know, it, there's a dry cleaner and there's a, a, a party store. For those of you that are in the Midwest, that's what we call the convenience stores. Um, you know, family diners and local bars that were for sale. And I thought, you know what, buying someone else's business and trying to figure it out is not for me. I'm a systems guy. I came from a large franchise and I decided that I wanted to purchase a franchise system because it's proven, maybe not in Michigan, maybe it is in Michigan, it's proven, but it's been proven by hopefully hundreds of other business owners. 
And that's when I really started to investigate franchises, more specifically, scouring the internet, uh, searching on Spotify, which is where I found you and uh, the Franchising 101 podcast. And so I started listening to your podcast just as someone who wanted to know more about franchises and what I should be looking for. And, uh, you know, I think in almost every single one of them, probably in every one of them, you say, hey, if you're interested, give me a call. And I thought, well, you know, why not? Because at the end of the day, the, the way that I've been successful in my career has been to surround me with people that are smarter than me in areas that I need help. And one of the areas that I, I don't know much about, well, now I know a lot more because of your help, but was how to find a franchise in a different industry that would match up with what I was looking for. And so that's really what led me to, to call you. Once I started researching it and realizing all the franchises that I didn't necessarily know were franchises around me and seeing what the opportunity was, it was incredible. So um, it seemed interesting. I started to listen to this Fran Coach podcast. Um, uh, and I, and honestly, what I did was I Googled Franchising 101 um, podcasts. And and that's what came up because I, I needed that 100 level course. Um, I just needed the basics. I went to the very first podcast and started listening from there. And I don't, I got pretty far into it, um, farther than I should have before I, I got a hold of Tim here. I wanted something that was going to really secure our future. Um, and we have 401ks, we have investments, there's all kinds of other things we have. Um, but what seemed to be the best opportunity was franchising. This is something that, um, and I, I'm not sure which episode it was, but you're already talking about exit strategies. And it just opened up my mind to, okay, this is something that um, I get to be in charge of and really grow to, wow, this sets up my family's future. Whether I stick, so my kids are three and a half, I don't know. It, it'd be great if I stick with one franchise for that long and they, maybe they take it over or I get to a point where I'm able to, I sell it or there's other, so many other opportunities that really sets up my family's future really well that I hadn't, I never really thought of it all. Um, and yeah, I think this puts, it puts the best foot forward for us. I finally got tired of like having random conversations that, that weren't purposeful because I didn't understand what the purpose was. Right. Uh, and that's when I reached out to you. And through your questioning, I was able to figure out what elements of business attracted me and, and really get a sense of what I both envisioned as a business owner, but what was actually possible as a business owner. Early on, you're going to do a survey. If you, if you work with, um, you know, any kind of decent franchise coach, you're going to you're you're they're going to ask you some difficult questions about what you want to do and you got to answer them honestly so they can really position the right the right franchises for you to go consider and then once you have those you you have to be honest with yourself and be completely open to the process i remember tim you said that to us early on be open and and i think jeff and i have always consistently been objective in anything that we do, not just with this. And, but that was really helpful because although probably in the very, the earliest stages of this, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, I would love to go with Zoom room. How fun would that be? But then as we started talking through it, I was like, there's just no way that we can make, we can make enough money training dogs. Right. But you know, you get down to it, um, listen to the people, ask the right questions, you can. And it, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you can read it. It's all there in the FDDs yeah. um, and you can't make that stuff up. So yeah. people are doing it every day. I guess the first thing that that I would say if I was giving anyone advice is, is find someone to help you through the process. Because, uh, you know, if you're just looking for a franchise on your own, you may not know the right questions to ask. You may not understand uh, the process fully. And, and that may end up with a result that you really don't want. So I was really thankful, one, Tim, to have you as someone who could help us through that process. Um, and, and then I guess number two, uh, one of the things that I believe is, is really important is being able to be open-minded 
Um, what you're used to as an employee is going to be different than what you get as an owner. And I can distinctly remember one call that I had with you, Tim, where you had to talk me off the ledge. <laughs> I remember saying, Tim, I make this much money per year, and these owners are telling me that they make this, and that's not going to work. And, and you said, Dave, you, you need to step back because you're looking at it from a, an employee collecting a paycheck. You're going to make money differently. And, and when I sat down and I really looked at the numbers – and the different ways that I was going to be able to compensate myself, not just with a paycheck, but also some of the bills that now were going to become business expenses, it, it was really easy to see that it was very doable. And so that's one of the things that I would give advice about is, um, I think, uh, was it Robert Kiyosaki says that uh, the most addictive drug in America is a paycheck because we start getting them when we're 14 or 15 years old and we used to getting that every single week. Yep. And, um, you know, getting used to not getting compensated, not getting paid that way anymore and finding a different way is something that I would say is probably very new for most people getting into the business world. And so being able to wrap your mind around that early, I think would help. You had said earlier in the process, and you say this on a lot of the podcasts, that you're going to present three options and they might outwardly look like three very different companies. But as you start to peel back the layers, you can start to see some similarities. And I think that also harkens back to an earlier step in the process where you're digging into to me, the franchisee. And um, I went into that thinking, well, this is just going to be about, he's going to run a like a credit thing or just ask me some some financing questions and it's it's deeper than that and um i think that's one of the keys that you don't get from google or anything else is the process is so much deeper into who you are what are you looking for who do you want to work with what kind of businesses do you want to run um so uh that actually i think that was a that gave me a ton of confidence going into um oh my lights went on going into the uh uh, that, that call where you presented the franchises going through the process, my, my understanding shifted, um, through the conversations that I had with the, with the franchisors, as well as our ongoing conversations, um, keying in to what was important to me made it so much easier to, to derive purpose from those conversations, um, and figure out what it was I was actually looking for and which one was going to provide that. You met with us weekly. Um, or, or more as often as was needed to help keep us on track, um, make sure that, hey, we're doing the right things, our thought processes are in the right spot, all of that stuff. I mean, you were a true coach. The other guy didn't do so much of that. Um, so I, I'd recommend to anybody who finds a franchise coach to, um, to find somebody that's actually going to truly coach you through the process. It was extremely, extremely helpful. Trust the process, do the work. And that that's not only the advice that I got from you, but from each of the franchisors that I spoke with, um, each of, in my case, the business coaches that I spoke with as I was doing my validation calls, trust the process, do the work. Um, you know, if I had continued trying to figure out what franchising was, franchising was on my own, I would not have come to this decision. Um, and I'd have, I'd have tried to muddle through another business venture somehow without understanding um, yeah. one that I'm the kind of person who benefits from a proven process <laughs> that I just have to apply. Yeah. Um, and two, without having gained a business understanding that I wouldn't have had as a civilian, um, yeah. you know, which is it's, it's not about having all of the answers, but about being responsible. So, uh, you know, I'd have tried to have all of the answers before I did anything and I'd never have done it. You know, with a franchise, the processes, the procedures, the help and the support are all there. You just got to follow the process and, yeah. and trust yourself. And then if you don't, if you have questions, reach out because there are people there to help you. Um, so I think that that's the other big thing. So like, um, and, and I guess finally too, I mean, if you're just even thinking about it, then 
you know, find a franchise coach and, and have the, have the conversation. It, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. Don't we, um, if you say you're listening to the podcast and you're, you're a few episodes in and things sound good, just, just contact you just reach out because reaching out to you, reaching out to, to it wasn't, um, okay, now you're locked in and we're going to be doing all these things. It was just, it was still both, both you, Tim and I having conversations of, is this even right? Um, and that is, I felt very, uh, I felt that like that was very sincere through the process of this early on, I should say, of we're going to decide if this is even the right thing for you to do right now. Um, so I went, I did way too much Googling. So stop, everyone stop <laughs> Google, just put that down. Yes. Um, don't, don't, don't do that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if you've listened to some of these episodes and you say, this sounds good, just reach out. Um, because Tim will be very honest. You'll be very honest. I think with, um, Hey, this is not the right time, but here's when the right time is versus, you know, okay, I think we're on the right. I think you, we have the right things in place. Let's go do this. I love hearing those stories. And, and, and again, I just, uh, was so excited for, for all of those folks for their journey and, and just, I, in fact, hope we can get them back on here and, and over the next year or so and hear how they have grown their franchises. Um, some of the ones they are partnered with are ones that we spoke with this year. We had 20 different franchise partners come on during the year to talk about their brand and the, and just in general, the incredibly wide range of franchise opportunities that are out there, um, how they can differ even within the same 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 genre, same industry, same niche. Um, so just want to give a quick shout out and thank you to all of the ones that that came on. Um, I'm going to go all romper room here and just kind of list them off. And, and first of all, if you're under 40, Google romper room, and then imagine my little ring light behind me with a little mirror. And again, that would be funny if you were old, but otherwise Google it. But the partners that we had come on, America's Swimming Pool Company, the Happy Cat Hotel, Managed Mode, Mosquito Hunters, Exponential Fitness, Perspire Sauna Studio, Anago Cleaning, Teriyaki Madness, Senior Helpers, Squeegee Squad, 100% Chiropractic, U.S. Lawns, Architect, The Drip Bar, 360 Painting, Home Clean Heroes, 1-800 Plumbing Plus Air, Soft Rock, Dumpster Dudes, and Grizzly Auto Detail. Whew, yes, all of them on Excited for probably at least another 20 or so coming on in 2023. In fact, we've got most of January and a little bit of February already planned out with, with our franchise partners that want to come on and share with, share their story. Take a look, take a listen, uh, see see what you think. And again, thanks to all of them for being amazing supporters uh, down the road. And again, excited to talk to you about 20 or so new brands in 2023. The other big kind of chunk of topics that we discussed uh, throughout the year on our episode, and I think really it's the the core of who we are at Fran Coach in the Franchising 101 podcast, what we're trying to do is simply educate people on all aspects of franchise ownership. Um, what, what's it all about? Why should you do it? If you should, all of these different things. And again, there's a really wide range of things that we talked about, some very specific to Frame coach and how we help. Uh, some are very uh, specific to just different things that are going to happen along the way and the journey, things that you should be thinking about as you're vetting franchises, even sometimes things that are just, should you, you think about before you even jump into this. Uh, we also talked about a couple you know, key elements of just in the franchising industry. Uh, we did one on the whole the, the International Franchise Association annual um, conference, a little recap and reflection, which was amazing and like coming up again here in 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 a couple in a couple of months. So excited to be able to attend that again. Um, but a couple of things in particular that really stood out, and and kind of these probably I'd say maybe the three main things because it, it it's pretty consistent. Is first is what is the number one reason people become a franchise owner? Um, if you haven't listened to that one already, what what's what what's your answer right off the top of the head? And I promise you, it's not what you what you think it is. Uh, so let's take a listen to what that's all about. 
dare I say, like, what is the number one most common thing? Um, so what was your guess? I'm going to say a few of you probably shouted out something to do with money. Decent guess, but buzzer sound, wrong answer. The number one thing is, and I can sum it up in one word and then we'll dig into it. It's the word control. Um, now, does that mean that you are a control freak? No, no, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a control freak, but it is a control over so many and really all aspects of somebody's life. Um, we'll hear things like <clears throat> control over their, their schedule, their time, their flexibility, their freedom, their lifestyle, all of those things um, that are becoming more and more important for people. Um, and um, to, again, not to, for those that have had to go back into an office, not dealing with the traffic, the commute, all of those things, um, missing out on anything with their kids or their lives, whatever that might be. Um, and to each person, it is a little bit different. Uh, but all of these things that we're going to talk about that where can control can come in, um, I mean, I can kind of speak to as 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 a, as a business owner and what got me started in this as well. But I having the flexibility to not really have my calendar open until eight thirty this morning because I had to take my my kid to school, um, or 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 days when I have to to pick him up and I'm going to pick him up at school at two sixteen, not two fifteen, not two seventeen, two sixteen. Um, whatever that whatever that might be to people. Um, I'm married for crying out loud to a woman that lives in a different state as me. Um, she would say I live in a different state as her semantics, right? But to have the control over our time, our lives, our flexibility, our schedule to actually kind of make that work. One of the other things that we talked about is what what's an owner role? What are some of the things that you, are there any things you have to do? Are there any things you should be good at? How do you understand what that really is and how does that translate into what is going to ultimately be your best franchise to own? Um, and to give you a little hint, this is probably the most important piece. Uh, we also refer to it as the get out of bed test. Uh, take a little listen to some, some things from the owner role in that get out of bed test that uh, we really want you to be aware of. When we are working with our clients, um, kind of just a little recap on our process. First call we have with folks is just a little introductory, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, why are we on the phone? How do we connect? What will get you thinking about this? A little background stuff. And we're going to kind of walk you through what we're going to do from there, which is build out your ideal business model. Um, we got a little profile we'll have you fill out, but our second call is really an hour. And no pressure, but that hour long second call is the most important thing we're going to talk about. And we're going to run you through a whole slew of questions. I'm going to just pummel you basically with things. And I always say kind of jokingly, like, you know, hey, we're going to figure out what you want to be when you grow up. Um, and part of this for especially folks coming out of the corporate world that have been doing that their whole life, there is there is very definitely a paradigm shift with this. And there is a phrase we use often and we call it the get out of bed test. Um, and this is really, this is the most vital, critical, key, whatever cool word we want there, a piece of finding the best franchise for you to own. Um, in fact, one of our very first podcast episodes we did like two years ago was on the topic, the get out of bed test. It is something that comes up all the time with our clients, both uh, at, at the beginning, but certainly as we get farther along vetting the franchises, because there is so much information that's going to come along during that six to eight week journey, it's really easy to get caught in the weeds on a whole variety of different things. But what really matters is, is you as the owner and what you're doing, right? So think of this owner role as there is, and I kind of teased this at the beginning, like, hey, are there any things that you like you have to be good at? Or, you know, what if you're not good at or you don't want to do certain things? Does that hinder you in becoming a franchise owner, whether it's lack of experience or lack of desire to do something? The short answer is no, uh, it does not hinder you. This is, we're going to build out what you're good at, what you want to do, and we're going to be able to find it. Um, we work with too many different franchises. There's too many different options. There will be something out there for you, right? So some of the things that we kind of think about, like very, the most basic level is, is this your full-time gig? Are you jumping into this full-time 
or are you keeping a job or another business opportunity when this is going to be part-time or the industry term is semi-absentee? And we've done a couple of podcasts just on semi-absentee, but very, you know, 10, 15 hours a week managing a manager. I don't, I'm not going to go too deep into that because we've, we've, we've discussed that on, 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 other, on other episodes. We're going to look at this. You're, you're, this is your full-time thing as an owner. So um, do we care about what you've done in the past? Sort of, right? This is not a job interview, right? We're not focused on what are all the things on your, all the bullet points on your resume, right? So, because let's be honest, you probably made up half that crap anyway or embellished the heck out of it. So um, we're not worried about that. We're not worried about what's on your LinkedIn profile, right? We're worried about you. And again, what are you good at? What do you want to do? And one other one, and this comes up often, once we get folks connected to the franchises, um, we're going to hear these two words come up. People get super excited about the brands. Oh my gosh, I really love this. It's so exciting, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, they're going to start to get a little, the fear is going to creep in. And we're going to hear words called concerns or challenges. Um, but those have kind of unique meanings to each of them, um, how that manifests itself throughout this process. Uh, take a listen to a couple of things we talked about on challenges and concerns during this process. At the beginning, it's not a concern. Once we're informed and we've taken the steps and we've gathered the, the information, talked to the right people, at that point, really, it's not a concern. It's a deal breaker, okay? That's what really kind of happens as we as we roll through this. Um, and again, as we as we talk to people, um, the there's really two goals for a friend coach as we start working with people. And number one is very simply, um, the friend coach process is designed to educate our clients on all things about franchise ownership to help them determine if franchise ownership is the right path for them now. And again, let's be honest. Majority of people, it's not, and that's okay. So these type of kind of quote concerns and the lack of information and being able to follow the process is going to help us understand if franchise ownership is the right path. With that example, we're going to get everything and we're going to get more excited about that particular brand, or we're going to cross something off the list. And now we can kind of focus on a couple, whatever the other two things are. Maybe we get all the way through and we had a concern on all three options we start with. They're deal breakers. And again, maybe that answers the question of if this is the right time. And maybe the answer is no. But we're now educated on the fact that we we know is this is not the right time versus so many people. And maybe even some of you listening right now, like, yeah, it would be great to work for myself. I've always thought about it. I would love to have my own business. But I have concerns about, is it a concern or do you not have enough information? Okay. Right. And my guess is it's the latter. We don't have enough information, which by the way, is why we're here, but we'll come back to that. That's concerns. Now let's talk about challenges. Um, the word concern, uh, I think it's pretty easy to see how that can kind of sound a little bit more negative challenges. Maybe it sounds a little bit less, uh, negative than concerns, but there definitely is that overtone to it. You're going to hear that the, the challenge is like, yes, that is the challenge I want. Right. And let's be honest, if you're not up for a little bit of a challenge, yeah, franchise ownership, let me help you. No, no, no. Right. So as you think about those two words and especially concerns, because we hear that a lot, I have a concern with X and me, our team, we're going to be pretty blunt with you in that situation. It's not a concern. It's not really a concern. We need more information. Right. When we gather the information, then we're going to know is that something we're totally comfortable with now that we are knowledgeable about it, or was that a deal breaker? Right. Um, same thing, same thing for, for, for challenges, right? What does that, what does that look like? What are we comfortable with individually as we get educated on all of this? What an amazing year we had on the podcast with all of our guests, all of our topics and excited for 2023 um, with one exception, like I got to come up with more things to talk about, folks. So help us out. And again, we had some some great um, listener feedback and suggestions that led to easily probably half a dozen of the things that we talked about. And the first couple, we've got a couple in January that are the same thing. So please don't hesitate with that. But really, as we as we head into the new year, 
it is the time for all of us to take a moment to like self-assess, right? Uh, where are we in our life personally, professionally? Um, are, are, are we good? Are we happy with it? If so, awesome, right? But I think most of us, if, we're, if we have any level of self-awareness, there's some things we we, we would like to improve, right? Is it, I'm going to, I'm going to eat better. I'm going to get in a little better shape. I'm going to do this. I'm awesome, right? But from a professional standpoint and how that rolls into your personal life, are you happy with where you are right now professionally, right? Um, are you happy with the the lifestyle, right? The number one reason people started franchise, again, it wasn't money. It was, it was, it was the control over all aspects of their life, their freedom, their flexibility, their time. Yes, the money comes into play as well. If you're not there, um, last week we talked with fellow Fran coacher, Katie Lepper, and, and her little phrase is, new year, new you. Let, let, let's do it, folks. New year, new you. New, new year, new you. We got you, boo, on this. Um, reach out to the team at Fran Coach. This is what we're here to help you with. Let's educate you on franchise ownership to determine if this is the path for you. Maybe it's not, but if you're not happy, you're listening to this, there's something in your mind that's drive, driving you to this point. Let's see if there might be something out there for you so you can take 2023 and end, end, end it as maybe a guest talking in your words what, what your journey was like and how you now are a franchise owner and in control of your of your life. Um, we are here for that. There's never, ever any fee for our service. Uh, Francoach.net, franchising101podcast.net. Um, we've got a ton of new exciting things. I just almost spit it out right there accidentally. Uh, a whole new uh, whole new website with a, with a whole slew of new content for you as well to again, help educate you on all things franchising. I hope everybody had a fantastic holiday, uh, safe, and, uh, and prosperous new year. Um, thanks for joining us. As always, we, we greatly appreciate it. We hope to be able to talk to you and help you create your better tomorrow. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We will talk to you next year. Thanks for listening to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast, where our ultimate goal is to help educate you on all things franchising so you can create your better tomorrow.